Let's return to our data set one last time of how many women CEOs in Fortune 500 companies there have been over the course of the uh, past 10 years, so from 2014 to 2023. Now, we've looked at sketching a box plot using Desmos. The other type of graph that we like to be able to create are histograms. So let's see how Desmos can help us to do that. The first thing that we want to do is call up on this uh, keypad down here and choose the option for functions. What I want to do is sketch a histogram so we can scroll through the functions until we get to the visualizations and that first option here is a histogram. Oh, I didn't hit enter last time. Let's try that one more time. Hit enter, make sure we're on a new spot. Now we'll do functions and we'll scroll down to histogram. Now, this time, notice that it gives us some hint about what information we're looking for. The first piece of information that it wants is the data set, and then we want to do a comma and write something called the bin width. So let's choose the data set first. Uh, I'm using this data set up here that I've already defined as A, so let's go ahead and get that. We want to do capital A here. Now, notice here it's drawn uh, somewhat of a histogram here. We've got a lot of values just here at one, which is kind of boring. So what we want to do is create some bin width options right now. Um, so what do we want to do? Well, if we look at our values up here, we're counting between, um, let's backspace this for a second. Notice that I have values down here at almost 20 up to, you know, high 50s. So maybe let's count by fives to try to get six to 10 things. If you ever get stuck and just want some general idea, if you take 52 and subtract 24 and divide by five or six and try to get a common, a number that's kind of close to that, that usually works pretty good. If I want to count by fives, I'm going to go ahead and put comma five here. Now notice this looks a lot cleaner. We've got all of our data points um, or counting values set here and the heights of each of those values. And we can see a little bit of for example, a right-hand skew here at this, meaning that we've had a lot more high number of CEOs in the last couple of few, couple of years that have pulled this way up. I do want to have count here. My bin alignment here is the center, and I think this is a little bit confusing with the way that we've been talking about things, so change that bin alignment to be left. Now what I can see is I have a bar between 20 and 25, where there were four women CEOs. I have a bar between 30 and 35 where there were two CEOs. Between 35 and 40, that happened one year. Between 40 and 45 happened for two years. Then we had a little gap. And between 50 and 55, in our most recent 2023 year, we've seen a jump up here uh, to a higher value. So this gives us a pretty nice looking histogram. Now, because this is a specific type of graph, it's always a good idea to label our axes so we know what things we're talking about. We can label our axes by using this wrench button up here at the top. And here there's examples of places for labels. The x-axis or number line should always reflect what kind of data questions you, your numbers were. So this is the number of women CEOs. And then the frequency is how many years that happened. Frequency in years. So here you can notice I have um, my axis labeled here and I have my axis labeled here. So this is going to be essentially the type of graph that I'm looking for uh, for you to turn in when I ask you to sketch a histogram. You can always click on this zoom button, zoom fit button here, and that kind of centers the, the picture and space that I have. If the, especially if the bars don't show up at all, clicking on that little histogram button there will cause that to go away. Now, if you're drawing several different uh, graphs at the same time, for example, let's say that I also wanted to um, sketch a box plot here. We can find that under functions or type it in. Right now, my box plot is over the top of my histogram. You can click on the bar on the graphs here to just disable it from the picture for that one. So if I want just the histogram, I can make sure the histogram is lit up, or I can come down here and click on the box plot button so that one fades away. 
So those are some nice ways that you can uh, do multiple things at the same time and include or disinclude the different values as you go through. We could even, for example, here create an offset of maybe five for my box plot. Make sure it shows up. So we'll click on there. And then I could have the histogram and the box plots both showing up up here and being able to look at those pieces of information together in the same graph. Um, again, if you want to, if you're ready to export your graph, you can use um, a snipping tool to uh, cut and paste a picture of this. You can take a screenshot of this page or you can come up here into the share button and choose export your image and then download the image from here to save it to include on your homework. Um, if you are on your phone, uh, everything will work exactly the way we did here. Just make sure you've got that keyboard function being pulled up to find your functions area so you can get histograms and box plots. Um, and you can just take a screenshot of your phone uh, where the graph is being displayed and use that to turn in um, for your document. Um, okay, and I think this is about all that we're going to need to do here for uh, data visualizations and uh, summary statistics.